it's Vanessa the Crafty Gemini. I post weekly videos right here on my YouTube channel and in this video tutorial I'm gonna teach you how to make my little catch-all fabric basket. It's so easy to make I think you're going to enjoy it. So let's get started on the little catch-all fabric basket. A few things you're going to need, two pieces of fabric. One is going to be for the outside, like this, and one is going to be for your inside lining. So these are cut to 10 inches by 8 inches, cut them both to the same size. Now we're going to need a few other products that are going to stabilize our fabrics and give the little basket some body as well. Now I am going to use for the inside, I like to use something like this as like a foam product. This one happens to be called Flex Foam. It's not fusible at all, it's just the Flex Foam itself. And then something else I'm going to be using is a product called Pellon Shape Flex. It's SF101 and this is just a woven fusible interfacing. It's pretty lightweight. You can see it's kind of sheer and this is just going to give some stability to our lining fabric. And I have samples here so you can see the difference. I did not use the shape flex on the lining fabric in this basket and you can see how the fabric is kind of floating around in there. It doesn't look bad but it can definitely look a little bit neater. And then on this sample that I have partially made here you can see how the lining fabric lays a lot flatter. It doesn't pucker as much because there's not that much movement. The interfacing has pretty much stabilized it and then we go back and quilt on it so that's going to help it even more but you can see that the inside even on the sides here that are not quilted it lays a lot flatter than the sides on this one. So it's up to you. If you don't have an, a lightweight fusible interfacing like this, go ahead and do it without it. It's still going to work out fine. So the first step is to fuse the interfacing, uh, the lightweight interfacing, the shape flex, to your lining fabric. So whatever fabric is going to go on the inside of your basket, that's the one you want to fuse the shape flex to. So let me get my iron and ironing board. And I already cut the shape flex to size, remember 10 inches by 8 inches. Lay it so that the fusible side of the product, which is the bumpier side, is going towards the wrong or the ugly side of the fabric. And we're going to fuse this into place. Okay, so my lining fabric is nice and stabilized. Now we're going to take it, the outside fabric doesn't have anything on it yet, okay? So just lay it pretty side of the fabric facing up, it doesn't matter which way you do it. And then I'm going to lay the other one pretty side of the fabric facing down. Now at this point I'm going to take some pins, let me grab my pins, and I'm going to pin all the way around this piece. have our two layers pinned up. Now before we start stitching we need to go here to one of the sides and I like to leave the opening on one of the longer sides, so on one of the 10 inch sides and I'm just going to leave an opening of about 5 inches or so and I'm marking this line with a fabric, a water soluble fabric marking pen so that I can remind myself not to stitch on that line. I'm going to start at either end, I'm going to start down here, back stitch and I'm going to pivot when I get to my corner, stitch all the way around using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. One thing you want to make note of is to backstitch at the beginning and at the ends of your stitches because we have an opening we need to reach in to flip everything right side out and if you don't have those back stitches there to secure it you're going to end up pulling your pieces apart. And I'm back stitching at the end as well. All right, so now let's trim a little bit of this excess bulk from the corners. You can take a pair of scissors if you're not too comfortable with the rotary cutter, but I'm just going to shave away from the corners. 
And I'll hold this up and show you exactly how I did it. So here's the corner so you can see how I shaved some of the excess fabric to reduce that bulk. I came in at an angle kind of tapering it off towards the point on both ends or both sides of the corner, making sure to stay away from those corner stitches. If you clip into them, you're going to have to restitch it. So definitely stay away, but get close enough to where you're reducing the fabric bulk. And I'm going to repeat that to all four corners. Okay, now we can flip the entire thing right side out, and let's bring our ironing board over as well. I like to poke out all the corners first. Actually, let me show you all a little trick that makes this, um, when you turn over this seam that we have here at the opening, it's going to be a little bit easier. Sometimes I remember to do it, and sometimes I don't. So let's show you how to do it now. Right where our opening is, we're going to have to end up turning them under after we flip the whole thing right side out. So instead, what I do is I turn them now. So folding it back towards the wrong side, about the same distance over as my seam allowance. This is just going to give me a crease line. So when I do flip the whole thing right side out, I have a little something that's a little better to work with, and I don't have to be trying to eyeball the seam allowance to turn it under. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just going to help give you a better little guide. All right, so let's flip the whole thing right side out now. Make sure that you're poking out all those corners. So it looks good so far. If you want to poke your corners out a little bit more, you can push them out with a little chopstick or something that has a blunt end. Definitely don't use the pointed end of your scissors, okay? You might crack a hole right through it. All right, so this looks good so far. And if you notice here, on the, the side that we had our opening, because I already pressed the seam allowances over, you can see that they're already creased and they're kind of folding in on themselves. So that saves you a little bit of time there. Let me go ahead and press this all the way flat to get those side seams going nice and neatly all around. Tuck these raw edges under. All right, now the fun part. We are gonna take our flex foam, fold it, I like to hold it horizontally in front of me first, then I fold it in half, and then I fold it in half again, kinda like a hot dog. So open this way horizontally, fold it in half, fold it in half again, and now I'm going to feed this inside our opening here. So if you notice where your first fold is, that should, when you put this inside, you want that fold to be right at the center mark. That way you can just open it and it's going to lay nicely in there. And because we've cut this to a smaller size, you cut this only at 9 inches by 7 inches, you'll have plenty of space in here. It'll fit nice and snug even after the seam allowances. I'm going to push it all the way to one end. Make sure that center fold is going down somewhere in my center. And work it in there with your hands. All right, that's all the way over. So I have it halfway in. You can see here, I feel it all the way on the end this side. And now I can just hold it in the center, hold one side down and flip it so it opens in there and fills out the entire space. It's a lot easier than trying to move it completely in there. So just tuck out all the corners, make sure it's laying nice and flat like this. Give it another press in case you got to get anything in place. Great. Now let's head over to the sewing machine again, and we are going to top stitch this all the way around. So you want to be staying about an eighth of an inch from the edge. We are going to be doing two things, top stitching it for a decorative finish, but then also we are going to be closing the little opening that we left open, right? So let me close this. You can put some clips if you want to. Because of the foam, sometimes it, it pops open the opening a little bit too big. All right, so I'll just start on one end. I like to increase my stitch length to about a 2.8 or 3.0, just because I'm going through a lot of bulk and the flex foam is kind of chunky. All 
All right, so that's all done. You can cut away any little threads that you may have still dangling. Now we're gonna move on to the next step. And this part is a part that I really like. It's the quilting part. You don't have to do it, but if you have uh, the thread on hand, if you wanna use variegated threads or something else to give it a pop, I definitely recommend it. If you're in a hurry, go ahead and leave it like this. Remember that if you use the Shape Flex, it's gonna lay a little bit flatter in here than just the fabric by itself. But if you do wanna go ahead with some quilting, here's a sample of one that I already did so you can get an idea of what it is. It's gonna fit in right to what the bottom of the finished catch-all basket is gonna look like. And I think it just adds another decorative touch. It's cool to use a contrasting thread to add a pop of color or even some fun variegated threads. So let me show you how I did it. In this one here, I used the same fabric, but for the lining, in this case, I'm gonna use that for the outer. I'm gonna use this really cool tulip pink fabric for the inside lining part. Remember, that's the one that we stabilized with the Shape Flex. And so what I've done is I cut out a piece of cardboard that measures four inches by six inches, and this is a standard postcard size. So if you have a postcard lying around, you can use it for this project. I turn it so that the rectangle is going horizontally here lengthwise in front of me, and I'm going to eyeball this rectangle right in the center. You can definitely measure. It should be about, I think it's a little more than one and a half inches from each side. I'm pretty good at eyeballing it, so we're just gonna wing it right there. And take some type of fabric marking pen that looks good right there, and trace around your four by six template here. And this is now going to be our guide for stitching our quilting stitches, all right? Super easy. Now I'm gonna head over to the machine. At this point, I like to uh, lengthen my straight stitch a little bit more, get it to be about a 3.0 to a 3.2 because we are going through two layers of fabric, a layer of the interfacing, of the fusible interfacing, and then also the foam, all right? So let's line this up here, increase that stitch length so we can get through everything a little bit easier, and then just follow the guide that you just traced out. So I've stitched around and quilted a big rectangle. You can leave it like that if you want to. You can do lines, you can do any design you want to. In this one, I think I'm just gonna do a big X. So let me back stitch right back to the corner. And I think I'm just gonna do a big X across the entire rectangle here. I'll back stitch a few stitches there. You could follow along one side and come across the other, but I'm just gonna cut the thread and start again on another corner here. Center my needle so it's easier for me to follow, back stitch. All right, I like the way that looks. There's a big, nice X there, it's gonna give some Really good base, like a solid base to the bottom of my basket. Let me grab my iron and ironing board, a pair of scissors, trim away any little threads I have. Definitely cut all these threads off as you stitch because they can get super annoying. All right. Now let me just erase those marks with my iron there. Okay. Now, one last step. All we got to do is stitch down our four corners here to make it that give it that little boxy shape. So this is what you do. You're going to take these corners, remember there a cor there's a, a flat corner like that so it's a 90 degree angle. If we fold it in half like a mitered corner like you would do on your quilt binding, you're gonna fold it like this and this is giving us a 45 degree angle. So I'm bringing this top edge to touch this top edge and folding it right along here. If you did an X like I did, that X should follow through all the way to the line here, just a diagonal. All right, and once I have these two edges matching up here, I flip this so that the two edges here are going horizontally closest to me, facing me this way. And then what I do is basically, almost pretty much from the corner where your rectangle is, like this corner here, your line is gonna go from here to here, all right? Stitch this way. So let's fold it up again. And we're just gonna stitch, I have the, the edges here lined up facing me going horizontally, and I'm just gonna stitch a straight line straight down in front of me. And that's one down. And I like to back stitch quite a bit just to reinforce those corners. Now I'm gonna move on to the next one again. 
following that line from my X diagonal, fold everything here up, get those edges to match up nicely, flip it so that the edges are going horizontally in front of me here as I stitch, and I'm gonna stitch straight down. There's two. All right, so there is my little fabric basket. Now, depending on how far in you come in to stitch these, is what's, you know, it's gonna take up the sides of your basket, okay? So if you want it to lay a little bit flatter and you don't want these corners to be quite as big, if you want them to be a little bit smaller like these are, then just come in less. So what you wanna do is when you have this lined up on your sewing machine bed, try to see if you can find yourself a guide or you can flat out measure it and decide, okay, I want this peak from the stitch line out to the peak, I want it just to be one inch or one and a quarter inches. And then you can measure out and make sure that you're consistent along all four corners and then it's gonna turn out fine. So what I usually do is right here on the bed of my machine, from where the metal part hits the white plastic part, I usually will line it up with this and I'll just repeat that on all four corners so that the tip right here of that folded corner is right on the edge of the metal. So you can come up with any measurement that you want. You can mark it out with a ruler or use something on the bed of your machine like I did. But this just needs a good press to get it to lay a little bit flatter. It's a really cute catch-all fabric basket and I hope you make the project. So that's it for this video tutorial. I hope you all enjoyed learning how to make my really cute little catch-all fabric basket. These are great for all types of things. I have some pens in here. I also like to use them to store my little wonder clips, anything that you want to have access to and see, jewelry in the bathroom, your keys and your cell phone when you first come in the house. I mean, the uses for these little things are really endless. So I hope that you'll give this project a try. If you do, remember to take some pictures and upload them to social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest. You can find me all over the place. Definitely tag me because I love to see what you're making from my tutorials. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit it with that thumbs up below. Share it across the different social media sites and don't forget to click that subscribe button so you won't miss out on any of my future videos. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!